with me, instrument work and playing have always been two parallel tracks that I've, I've always been on. When we came to town from California in 1972, the first job I got was at Gruen Guitars, and the second job I got was playing for Wimbley and Stoney Cooper. And uh, I had a young child at home, and, and traveling and being gone all the time wasn't what I wanted to do. So we thought playing music in town and working on instruments would be our way to go. I worked at Gruen Guitars for eight years, and during that time, I took apart and uh, uh, studied hundreds of vintage instruments. And uh, during the course of repair, I had made every piece to repair broken instruments. I'd made every, you know, that made a neck, made a bridge, made a top, made a back, made a side. And it occurred to me, I could make all these parts and put them together and put my name on the instrument. And uh, that seemed like a good idea. And uh, so I, I started my shop here in 1980 and uh, started making guitars and banjos. I'll always be grateful for the time I spent at Gruen's shop. He was one of the only vintage instrument dealers in the country at that time, and all the great instruments came through the shop. And uh, as craftsmen, we got to see everything. And it was kind of like archeology, span trying to figure out how the old craftsmen did what they did to make these wonderful instruments. And uh, it was a long-term study. Uh, I learned a lot there about, uh, about the craft, about how it was done in the golden age, and how to do those things now. In thinking about what made me different from other guitar makers, I thought living here in Nashville was my main strong point, I suppose. So we decided to name the company Nashville Guitar Company. And uh, I asked uh, Takako Smith, uh, a local artist to design our logo, and she did a wonderful job, and uh, we've used it ever since. In this trade in general, it's, it's difficult to get recognition, especially now. There are so many people making instruments and so many companies, and you've got to break in and try to do something different that other people aren't doing. And uh, my experience here with, uh, with musicians and how they use their instruments puts me in kind of a unique spot. They all use their musical instruments as a tool. It's the way they make their living, and it's kind of like the difference between auto mechanics and aircraft mechanics. You're working to a, a little bit higher level for the professionals, and that has certainly influenced my work, and their, their perspective on uh, tone quality and just how, how musical instruments are used and uh, how to get the best out of them. That's the context I've, I've been in, and that's really affected my work more than anything. I would take advantage of uh, going to the station in. My first guitar, I, I took it down and Chet Atkins played it. I put it in his hands right away. That was a trip. And uh, I also took that instrument, showed it to Ricky Skaggs and everybody I could buttonhole. And uh, word got out that I was, I was making instruments. And uh, uh, that's the way we did it at first. We didn't really have an advertising budget. If someone comes to me and wants a guitar made, the first thing I ask about is, is how they will use it. How do you play? Do you play in a band? Do you play solo? What size audience do you play for? What, what other instruments are in your band? Do you use monitors on stage? Uh, do you play in the living room? Or uh, how is the guitar going to be used? That's the first thing I ask. And with that information, then I'll go on to size, uh, type of woods you want to see, and then uh, uh, neck configuration and playability, and, uh, and then last would be ornamentation. You can uh, learn about a piece of wood or, or a structure like an acoustic guitar from, from tapping and the sound you get back from the tap. In general, uh, a piece of wood, the pitch will drop the smaller the and thinner the piece of wood gets. And uh, each piece of the guitar, I, I try to get a, a, a sonic information on it from tapping it, but mainly the top. I tap tune the top all during the process of, of graduating it, of bracing it, and then even after it's together in, in the box. So it gives me information I need 
to know how to shape the top as I go along. One of my customers uh, told me about some Brazilian rosewood that his father had purchased in 1950. And uh, I've known about this wood for some time, but uh, we came to an agreement. We are uh, processing the wood in partnership. And uh, it's, oh, I guess about six boards that I'm resawing down into uh, guitar sets. I'm really excited about it. It's some beautiful wood. And uh, Brazilian rosewood is so hard to get these days. Well, most all of my work is done with edge tools tools that have edges that I sharpen and uh, my favorite and most often used tool is the pattern makers chisel set. The one I use most often was a, a gift from a friend. Uh, John DeMarkey found these uh, old chisels. The old steel is kind of special. It holds an edge better than anything modern so he knew that the, the uh, steel in them was special and then he made uh, Brazilian rosewood handles for me and those are probably my most treasured tools. I've accumulated uh, uh, some knowledge over the years and I believe uh, I'm practicing my craft now better than I ever have. I'm kind of at the top of my game that way and I have materials that I've been uh, saving and putting aside for about 50 years. And the material I have now is uh, very high quality, rare stuff that you can't get anymore. And I'm looking forward to this time of building, hopefully, the best instruments of my career. <laughs>